Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your PlayStation 5 DualSense controller to your Mac for the RPCS3 emulator, which is a PlayStation 3 emulator. I'll have a separate video in the description of how to set the emulator up. Now, you want to go to your system settings. You can search for it here if you don't have an icon. Go to Bluetooth. And what you need to do is put your controller into pairing mode. Don't press any buttons yet, but I'll show you which button we will be pressing. The share button and the PlayStation button will press them both at the same time for about five seconds. Then the light around the touchpad, the blue light, your, well, your star, it's an LED light, your star flashing blue really, really fast. The speed of the flash is faster than you would usually see. So that means it's in pairing mode. So keep it pressed both at the same time for about five seconds and you'll start flashing. There we go. And now he appears right here, click connect, it'll turn solid once it's successfully connected, which it has. Now we're all good to go. You can, you know, go to some information about here. You can even go to game controller settings. You can, you know, have some shortcuts. You can identify if you have mode control, press down your vibrate that controller. You can have profiles, but honestly, you can leave that as is. I'm gonna put this down. It's gonna launch up RPCS3. Now we're gonna go to pads. In here, we are going to set things up. So by default, it might look something like this. So you'll go to DualSense, your device. You can map it for any of the supported seven controllers. If you go to motion controls, as you can see, motion controls work. Great thing about using PlayStation controllers instead of an Xbox. For configuration files, you can add a new configuration. I'm not going to, but this is great if you want different control schemes for different games, different game genres, different players. Now you can map your controls. Click restore defaults. This will automatically do a mapping for this controller because it's a PlayStation controller, it does a good job. But you can override the settings, hence the configuration files and how they come into your play. Click up, press circle, or we can press it, press L3. But I'll go to restore defaults. You can change your device class. I'm going to stick to standard and you can change your LED settings as well. So go to LED settings, select color. And if it's a bit dark, it just drags all the way to the left, change the colors so say to yellow, click OK, click OK again, and then it will change. And you can you know, disable or enable the LED and some other options as well around the battery indicator, click OK, it's now yellow. If you look down here, you can enable vibration, which I've enabled and it does vibrate. If you look down here, it simulates the joysticks. So if you have dead zones, which mine is very minimal, you can increase these dead zones like so, which again, I'm just gonna resort default, which is great because if you have control and you have dead zones, they can be become unplayable on a console. Whereas using the emulator, you can configure it fully and that's it, we're good to go. We can click save, we'll go into our game, launch it up. And press X, down, down, up, up, play game. And I'll game the game, show, you know, the analog sticks working and then we're good to go. As you can see, it is now working. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below if you'd like to see other emulation controller setup videos or just emulation videos let me know what you would like to see if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell to be notified of when i release new videos and i'll see you in the next one take care bye